How's it going everyone? CJ and Mandy here today from On The Grow and what we're going to be doing is sharing our experience from our first farmer's market in the hopes that it'll help you guys out with your first farmer's market or if you've done quite a few of them, maybe there's going to be a tip or trick in here that might help you out. So stay tuned for more. Woo! <laughs> so cute. So as you can see, we've got the world's tiniest microphone here. It's super tiny. <laughs> so this is usually what we have uh, clipped to our shirts. And uh, unfortunately, our phone is positioned so far away that we're not going to be able to use this microphone the way we intended. So you'll have to deal with us holding up this cute little tiny <laughs> microphone. Kind of comical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but so let's kind of get into it. So we just did our first farmer's market and we had a great time. To give you kind of an idea, we did about $375 in sales. Uh, over a four hour period, it was a market on a Saturday from 8 to 12 p.m. This was a test market uh, for our local area. They, they don't have a current uh, farmer's market uh, going. This was one of two that they're doing to test to gauge kind of the public's interest to see if they want farmer's markets. And also uh, if there's local vendors that want to be a part of these farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a completely awesome experience. Um, it, it was super fun. And definitely very eye-opening, I feel, for both of us as far as where we want to take our business more. Yeah. So. So, so we both had an amazing time just interacting with the local community and sharing our greens for the first time uh, super openly and just kind of talking to people about what we do. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, I think the cool thing was this was our local community and it just, I don't know, it just felt very uh, revitalizing to share with them um, what we do. So let's kind of talk about what happened and uh and we'll kind of just trade off here you know as we go along we're going to kind of do this more free style in a sense usually yeah. we're kind of pretty structured with how we talk <laughs> about things um so this is going to be a little bit longer of a video um but we, we just hope that there's going to be something in here that you know brings value to you guys so i'll kind of start off here and say that uh uh, whenever we first found out about this market, uh, it was somebody local who actually found us on uh, Instagram. And the lucky thing is we were tagging our local city. So whenever yes. Mandy does our <laughs> post, she would tag uh, Lucas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And through that, uh, the person actually found us uh, and added us to the potential roster to be at the, one of the first test farmers markets. So that kind of shows the, the importance of social media and what mm -hmm. Mandy does. Uh, it's, it's very important to try to tag your local areas and try to tag even cities that are nearby you is never a good thing to do because you have people that are going to see you that wouldn't see you before. Yeah. So because she tagged us and Lucas and also Allen and McKinney, I'm not sure if you're familiar with like Dallas, the North Dallas area, but she tagged a lot of our surrounding cities and that just increases our visibility to the, uh, to the local community. So that's how we got this uh, in this position in the first place. Uh, we, we were originally going to be in a 10 by 10 tent, actually, and, <laughs> yeah. then, and then about two days before the farmer's market, we, we found out that we're actually going to be in the middle row of underneath a canopied area, so we had to completely scramble. <laughs> we had to switch last minute, get another table, switch a few things around. Um, we kept a lot of it how we originally had it, but obviously our banner's down lower because we couldn't put it up as high as we wanted to. But I think it worked out really well and everything still looks super awesome. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the cool thing is, so so I left all this design up to Mandy. I was dealing with other aspects of the business and uh, so I kind of passed it on to her. I was like, Thank hey, God keep, I'm creative. Yes, <laughs> she is the, creative, the super creative one. I would have had a meltdown trying to think of oh, this. God. Um, so that's one thing where we're kind of blessed to be a team. You can see our cat in here trying to. He's gonna try to steal the microgreens That's yes he, does. <laughs> he loves he loves the microgreens but um so i guess we'll kind of quickly talk about um some of this setup so we kept everything kind of in earthy tones uh you know this is something that uh i think it was very important too that we utilized a lot of things that we already kind of had uh like we had like some little like this little stand here we had an ipad now uh, we had this really little rolling cart and this little metal grate so we utilized things from around the house um as best we could to kind of keep the yeah. cost down because you don't really want this to you know cost ten thousand dollars to set up this you know. yeah because then it would take you forever to make that money back and you're kind of working mostly to pay back your stand <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> which you know in a sense we we basically paid for our stand 
Uh, <laughs> there's a story behind her banner, but we'll talk about yeah, that yeah, another time. An All right, so I'm going to kind of just pass this over to, to Mandy to take over and kind of talk about some of the things she did, uh, such as like how she displayed the product, the positioning of uh, the banner, and some different things kind of positioned around these tables. So Mandy, if you would take the cute tiny little torch. Little tiny Mac. So first off, doing all this was so much fun and it was definitely a great way for me to express a little bit of my creativity into our business. <laughs> um, but I wanted to make things where, you know, it made sense. Like with our baskets, I you can't really see it right now, but I have two pieces of wood behind it that I put a screw through to keep them together and kind of tilt the baskets forward a little bit. And that way, whenever our product is being displayed, um, people can see it a lot easier than when it's flat. Yeah, so for example, like just having this laid flat versus that slight five degree angle just mm -hmm. really helps the, uh, you can even see kind of here, uh, these look shaded because of the light. Yeah. And as soon as I tilt this up, you can see that light really popping off these labels there. So having that little bit of angling towards your customers, I think is incredibly important. Yeah, it makes, it makes a big difference. And then, you know, we added little things in like the tiny little chalkboards, which he ended up uh, 3D printing some little back stands for them. So that way they're also slightly tilted and people can easily read them. Um, we also did this, which I forgot to turn on right now, but we have an iPad over here that um, we had set to play basically a slideshow that showed, you know, our microgreens, um, a little bit of us, and then also our space. And that way people who aren't familiar with us could visually see where we grow at. And um, that was actually a suggestion made to us by uh, our friend Laura. So that was, that was an awesome suggestion. And then another thing that we did that was really big for us was we create a sign-up sheet, which I'm sure we'll go more into that. But it was just a sign-up sheet where we had people put their first and last names, and then also their email if they were interested in a little thing that we're testing out. Yeah, so, so basically what we did with that is we were pitching them the possibility of like, hey, would you be interested in being a part of a, like we'll, we'll deliver microgreens to your door um, using reusable containers. And we, we weren't like trying to sell it super hard. We're saying, hey, if you're interested yeah. in the possibility, uh, please leave your name and uh, email. We kept it super simple, just first mm -hmm. first and last name and then email. Uh, that way we're not like, you know, trying to grab their phone number, yeah. their address and we, all this information. We didn't want to be super invasive. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, um, so that actually turned out to be a huge, uh, huge success. So Yeah. And then um, I'm trying to think other little things that we added in. We, we didn't need it, but we printed out, uh, you know, some microgreen facts and stuff. So that way people wanted more in depth about, you know, the microgreens other than what we were already telling them it was all right here and available and we also um, uh, brought our texas uh, food handler safety so we brought this just to, uh just to have you know in case anybody is like hey have you you know done anything to mm -hmm. um, um, teach yourself to how to handle greens and all that yeah. so we just brought any kind of anything you have to show that you're certified to do what you do uh, I, th really I think it's just smart to have, especially for handing out the uh, samples. Yeah, that was, that was something uh, I was about to talk about too, was we had another suggestion um, from someone that actually follows us about handing out samples, which that helped so much <laughs> because you know, you have people that aren't familiar with microgreens or maybe they are familiar with them, but they've never tried them. So it was just a great way to not only show them our product, but also show them what microgreens are in a way that is easier to um, do than just talking about it. So we had our little sample here and we also had our tongs, which it was cold that day, so they broke. But um, it, it was just a really great way to kind of connect our product more with people that were passing by. Yes. So what we would do is... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, this is getting more into the sales aspect, which I'm actually going to probably talk about here in, a, yeah. in just a moment. So let's let's hold off on that, actually. Um, and I guess just kind of continue talking about mm -hmm. uh, the display. So, so as for our setup, we were originally going to have this one table. Because we found out we we're going to be in the middle of a section, we were like, okay, we've got to extend this booth just a little bit to um, encompass more of this, uh, to, to be able to show people more. So we had back here, we had some greens uh, and some trays so that people walking by would see this and be like, hey, what is this? and uh, hopefully get interested yeah. to walk around the front of this. And then uh, the chalkboard, which we actually went and bought two chalkboards ourselves and <laughs> kind of rigged it together. Well, CJ rigged it together with some chains and uh, some zip ties. But we 
wrote, you know, our prices, what we're selling, and we tried to make sure that we chose colors that would pop. And we made sure to kind of add some fun colors as well to make that pop a little bit more. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think that's pretty, pretty much it for our setup. Um, I guess now let's move on to some more about everything. Yeah. So, uh, something also to be aware of. So the cool thing about these table skirts that we have right here is that we were able to store all of our extra yeah. produce underneath. So anytime we needed to fill up, say we sold a bunch of these, then we'd just reach under the table, grab it yeah. and stack it up because we wanted this to look as abundant as possible. Yeah. And another, another good thing about this particular type of uh, tablecloth is because it is fitted around the whole entire table. Whenever the wind blows, it doesn't do this thing, you know, <laughs> it just kind of stayed in place. It, <laughs> it's the best way to describe do it. This thing. <laughs> but it kind of stayed in place. And I held our sign on and uh, this burlap and stuff like that with little safety pins. So that way it also didn't flap in the wind. Yes. Um, and as for this thing over here, what we did is we kept actually some extra produce, some like yeah. some extra back stock, just had it over here just to keep it abundant. And then up at the top, we had some uh, edible flowers that Mandy actually grows just to kind of talk about how uh, we offered this kind of mix kit and inside of it uh, were peas, sunflowers and radish and also a few of, yeah, of yeah. Mandy's edible flowers. So that was a, a good point for people to walk up and be like, oh, beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, actually, it's inside of this kit right here. So it's a, it's a way to kind of keep the conversation going and engage uh, potentially sales. I think that's about it for the display setup. So now let's talk about how we actually uh, had the produce displayed and uh, how we move towards the sales and that aspect of this. So as for the produce, again, Mandy had this idea of having everything lean forward. I think that's pretty common in the industry mm -hmm. is you want to have your produce kind of lean towards your, yeah, yeah. towards your customer there. And uh, we each actually tried out several different types of packaging because you know us, we like to do experiments. <laughs> And we just so happened to be testing out a whole bunch of different packaging uh, varieties here. So we, we tried these little sandwich bags uh, for our peas and sunflowers, also our little uh, baby lettuce mixes, which did not sell. No, and it was a, not a good one to sell. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we didn't sell it the right way yeah. is what I'm thinking. It could thinking. have just been our particular market, too, that we were at at the time. Yeah. And uh, what we also did was uh, we can we packaged the, the broccoli. These actually sold a little bit better in these little containers. Uh, people felt like it was a little bit better value. It's really packed in there versus, I don't know, there's a part of me that just doesn't love the um, packaging. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't look like it's valued at $5 per pack uh, versus like this really nicely packaged mm -hmm. container. Uh, and actually what sold the best was our Jeez. triple mix. Um, those were the, the first ones who nearly sell out. Um, it was, again, it was a mix of speckled pea, sunflower, and some radish, mm -hmm. and a few of Medi, me, 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 Medi, my name is Medi now, <laughs> Mandy's, Mandy's, <laughs> edible flowers, edible flowers, thank you, <laughs> and, uh, it just did really, really well, people loved, uh, the value th yeah. that it brought, because it was packed full of greens, and we were selling those for $10 a piece, they, and, they were our best seller, <laughs> yes, and to, to kind of give you an idea, um, for product-wise, it actually had just under, uh, I think it was a total of 4.9 ounces. Mm -hmm. So it was basically uh, each one of these little baggies here <clears throat> here for our sunflowers and peas are 2.5 ounces. And then uh, these had, so it had a little bit less peas, a little bit less sunflowers mm -hmm. and had some radish thrown in. I think it was about one ounces, one ounces, one ounce of radish mm -hmm. uh, in there as well. And some of Mandy's edible flowers. So it was a really great value mm -hmm. and it was a great kind of sampler thing. And again, it was the first one to sell out because people wanted to try multiple things yeah. at once. Uh, because, you know, we off we offered a lot of varieties. So again, this is, uh, you know, this is all just very experimental packaging and we've learned what worked and what did not work. I know that I want to go with bigger packaging. Uh, try to reduce the plastic as much as I can. I'm thinking about doing reusable uh, mason jars, like the 32 ounce mason yeah. jars. And uh, the uh, we're also looking at glass Tupperware, something that we can, and also uh, potentially doing like, live harvest into their own containers, you know, encouraging people to bring their own reusable containers. Uh, because the more that we can kind of uh, reduce the amount of like plastic and stuff that we're doing, that's really ultimately, that'd be really amazing. Um, but at some point, you know, people do, if they don't bring anything, we do have to have something to offer it into. So we're trying to figure out what that looks like. Regardless though, everything worked really great. Uh, the only thing I didn't love are these little plastic baggies. So we got to figure out a better, maybe a clamshell 
uh, one of these containers are these containers are compostable so maybe like a clamshell version of the compostable yeah. containers would be really nice um, so as for accepting payment and stuff, so we had a bank next to us, um, not a bank. I mean, it was, uh, basically all the cash so that we can make change for people. A little mini bank. Yeah. We had a mini <laughs> bank next to us and we also brought a card swiping device. Uh, we use QuickBooks for all of our, uh, kind of recording all our sales and everything mm -hmm. like that. And QuickBooks actually has this, uh, little device here so you can insert, uh, chipped cards and also swipe them. And it worked incredibly well. Uh, it was actually just towards the end of the day, for some reason, it started just disconnecting from the Bluetooth and then <laughs> it, connecting. It seemed like they did it because it also brought the cord, of course, and a little uh, battery pack to you, so if it died. But it seemed like once we disconnected it from this cord, it just started to like cut out. <laughs> yeah, it just started turning off <laughs> randomly. And, uh, and that brings up another point, too. So we brought a backup battery uh, pack and uh, some extra cords because our iPad actually ended up dying towards yeah. the end of the day. And this is something that, you know, really I think helps draw people in and, you know, how they say, how do you grow? And we can just actually point it right here as we talk about it. So they have that visual representation of like what's at what we're kind of talking about. And you can see we got pictures of our trailer, how the back drops down, pictures of the greens, yeah. pictures of us. So they, they can really get that sense that, hey, we are truly the farmers here growing this. Mm -hmm. And this is what our farm looks like. You know, I, I strongly encourage if you if you don't have like an iPad or something, just print out a picture of your farm or you with your some of your greens or something, just something to visually Someone connect the customer to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Show them that, hey, this is my farm and this is what I do and this is what I love doing. So that's about it for about up here. So uh, let's kind of talk about the sales and what works. This is the part I'm most excited about because one, I've never done sales before, but I got to see him like shine in his element and because he's really good at retaining a lot of things that he uh, reads. So that was like really, really cool to see you finally take all that information that you know and be able to like talk to people walking by about it and change like their, you know, their first thoughts on this because yeah. looking at it, they're just like, oh, it's some vegetables. And you were able to be like, no, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> so I think that was really awesome to see somebody like say about this. Yeah. So, so as for the sales, um, the, the thing that with farmers markets is, and, and so I've worked a lot of trade shows in the past uh, for my mom's company. Uh, I've worked where you know you stand in a booth and as people walk by you have this chance to kind of hand them a sample and get them engaged to talk about your product uh, and you can kind of gauge how they look at you and how they uh, look at your booth and you can mm -hmm. see how do I get into this conversation so honestly the number one thing that worked uh, to get somebody into conversation with us was a simple good morning how yeah. are you. That so, a good one. so as somebody's like walking by and they look at your stuff, just just a quick, hey, good morning. How are you doing today? Something like that. And then they come back with good morning. Thank you. How are you? And, uh, and then I would kind of joke. I'd be like, you know, I'm doing great, but it's a little bit nippy under here. It's a little chilly or something like that. Once you've kind of created that connection with the customer, that's an opportunity to, to ask them, have you heard of microgreens or do you know what microgreens are? Something along the lines of, hey, do you know what this is and are you interested? And what that does is they can be like, no, I haven't heard of them, or yes, I've heard of them, or you'll kind of be like, oh, I'm not interested. And that's a, that's a good point to be like, okay, that's fine. You know, this isn't for you. And you'll notice I'll just kind of go on. But a lot of the times they'll be like, no, I haven't heard of microgreens. What are they? And that's a great point to begin the education about what microgreens are, what you do, how you grow them. Uh, and I try to keep it short and sweet. So I say something along the lines of they're, they're basically very nutrient packed greens that are a very optimal point of their life when they're harvested, which makes them very abundant with nutrition and they're incredibly f flavorful. Um, that's one thing. It's it's nutrition and flavor because that's what we're, what we really do is you got these things that just taste amazing. So uh, once I've kind of done the basic pitch on that, then I'll say, hey, would you like to try a sample? And then as I kind of go into that, uh, I'll usually kind of let Mandy take over with a little bit of conversation about talking to them. Yeah, I and usually generally tell them like how to use it because that's another big one I think is how do you use this? Yes, that, that is a huge question. People yeah. are like, how, how would I use something like this? And that's where, you know, we say, you know, use it on your salads, use it in your smoothies, use it on your burgers, your uh, pizzas. We like to throw it on. We even joke that we make it on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of anything we can kind of do as we actually get this sample over into their hands. 
because once they taste this product, they're, it's usually like a, a wow moment. Mm -hmm. And we even had people, I mean, they're eating cookies and we're and to, to get over somebody eating a cookie <laughs> into eating some microgreens is uh, surprisingly easy. I, th I thought it was going to be a lot harder. I'd be like, would you like to try a sample? And you can see I'm just eating a cookie, like kind of give me this look. And I'm like, believe me, they're super tasty. You got to try one of these sunflowers. And, uh, and so we would get it into their hand. And then once they kind of taste it, it's usually a pretty much a, a solid sale at that point because they understand how good this product is, how fresh it is, um, how much flavor. And then you can kind of just start driving in uh, if, they're, if they're still not sold. Be like, you know, and what's amazing about sunflowers is that they're packed with vitamins A, B complex, D, E, calcium, iron, and potassium. And you start kind of hitting the points of the different greens and what they're amazing for. Like the radishes are so good for flavonoids or antioxidants. Uh, the broccoli is equally the same. They're, they're just known to, to really help with free radicals and anti-cancer um, cells and things like that. So you can kind of hit all those points as they're kind of enjoying the product. And then, uh, you know, it kind of, how do you sell from there? Most people are like, okay, well, what do you kind of suggest starting off with? And that's where we always pointed them over mm -hmm. to the mixed, uh, just because it has the most varieties. Um, and then also at the same time, once they tasted that first sunflower, we had about four other varieties over here that we would try to get into their hands as well. Be like, yeah. you know, Mandy would be like, hey, so do you like spicy or something like that? And we direct them to mustard and radish. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you kind of listen to, to what they... Uh, they it, like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you listen You listen to them. And, you, and what you're doing is you're, you're selling them uh, something that, number one, is hyper-local, uh, depending on where you sell, uh, or if it's just local, or if you're just selling to another state or whatever, then uh, you're just selling an incredibly nutritious product to them. And just realizing that and understanding the value of your product is huge. So... That's really about it for the sales. Um, I mean, there's just so many different ways to kind of engage with mm -hmm. sales, but uh, for the most part, just starting off with a simple good morning, how are you, is uh, and eye contact. Yeah, eye, con eye contact. Don't be on your phone the whole entire time. And also, what you taught me, I didn't know this, but don't have a chair there. Don't sit there down on a chair like the whole entire time. Be standing up, be engaging, be smiling, and introduce yourself. And that, like, we notice a lot of people coming to us because of that. We even had a um, someone, I think, selling the chocolates and stuff. And I just noticed that people are coming to microgreens. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we're surrounded by all kinds of different companies. And like she said, too, I mean, you, you want to be engaged. So mm -hmm. there, there's a huge difference from somebody sitting down in a chair on their yeah. phone and somebody standing up just ready to greet you mm -hmm. that is part of the reason why I think we were so successful is that we were ready to engage with everybody there at all times. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're just kind of you, you know you just you just you just smile and you and you keep yourself present and uh, you know you just you just want to show that you, you be nice. You know that's yeah. kind of the be nice and engaged. Um, and also stay at your booth. You'll be surprised at how many vendors we notice just kind of leaving their booths for quite a while and customers walk up to their to their stand. And then the customers walk away from the stand because there's no one there to serve them, to talk about it, uh, to, to, you know, describe the product or, you know, answer any questions or anything like that. So making sure that you're actually present, it's kind of good to have a team. That's one way that we're pretty blessed here uh, is that we're doing this as a couple because um, like if I had to run to the restroom, she can hold down the fort yeah. or if I wanted to go talk with somebody, I could step away for a minute and vice versa. You know, mm -hmm. she could step out of the booth for a few minutes. Um, but for the most part, we spent the entire four hours right behind this table, yeah. ready to engage with people. By, by the end of it, your feet are going to hurt and your back's going to hurt. But it's like all that excitement from talking to everyone and just engaging and realizing, oh, this is my community. I think that like we were we were pumped. We tried to take a nap whenever we got home and we just couldn't. We stayed up from like we woke up at five o'clock in the morning and we were up until I, I was up to like 12. Yeah, I think yeah, 10 or 12. And so like we were just feeling so lifted from that whole experience. Yeah, but it's just I don't know. It's just exciting. It was exciting. Even though you stand all day, it was exciting. Yeah. And I think maybe we were a little biased because this is our very first farmer's yeah. market. I mean, compared to people who've probably done 200, I don't know that you're going to get that same level of elation or joy. Um, yeah. I would hope that you would. You know, I feel like that um, 
that 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 feeling could continue uh so but yeah that just for us it was just such an amazing experience to be able to engage and i actually got to meet the uh, mayor of (laughs) of our local town he didn't know it was a mayor i didn't know either Uh, until our friend told us when she left but uh he asked the mayor if he was a farmer (laughs) yeah i had no idea who he was so so one of our friends brought him up and uh introduced him to us and I was just like, you know, I didn't know who the guy was, but the entire time I'm just being friendly and having conversation. And then towards the end, I'm like, so are you a farmer? Because she had uh, previously introduced us to a lettuce farmer who was incredibly nice. And uh, so I, I thought she was bringing another farmer to introduce us to. So, you know, I'm just asking. And then he goes away and she's like, that was the mayor. If you did, I don't know if you caught that. And I was like, oh, my goodness. What did I say? Did I say anything wrong? You know, so yeah, that kind of brings another point is um, it, it, it was a good reminder for me to be a bit more. I don't like political is the word I'm kind of coming to, but um, just just aware of the words I'm using and how I'm mindful. talking. Yeah, just being mindful, mindful. Yeah. of how I'm communicating with people because you never know who you're going to talk to. I, I was talking to the mayor and I had zero idea I was talking <laughs> to the mayor. And uh, and this is something to be very aware of. You never know who is walking into your booth. Yeah. Um, so you want to treat them, you know, with the utmost respect that you can. So that was really about it. I mean, everything. I think the only thing we didn't go over is price. So or why we did our prices the way we did. Them. Yeah, so we went with uh, $5 flat across the board except for the mix pack which was 10 and we we could have potentially gotten higher prices. Mm-hmm. But the main thing is that we want to and, and there's also something with pricing. You don't want to sell yourself sell yourself short yeah. because it's hard to raise your prices, but it's not so hard to lower your prices. So we felt really good hitting the market with $5. Uh, per pack for example we have about one and a half ounces of radish and one and a half ounces of broccoli and uh, for our sunflowers and peas it was 2.5 ounces so actually when you look at the pricing uh, there's other people in like mckinney a a town probably like 20 minutes away from us where they sell uh five dollars for four ounces so we're actually kind of selling this at a bit of a premium but we grow everything organically and uh, we're just very um, aware of how we grow and the, the caution. We take a lot of time. This is our full-time job. Yeah. So we are always around these and we go the extra mile whenever we're checking our trays, like our sunflowers. If there's any shells on them, we take that time to get those off. Yeah. So it's little things like that that make our cost what it is. Yeah. So an example was we went to the McKinney Farmer's Market, a local farmer's market, uh, that actually brings up another point. So before you do your first farmer's market, go check out other mm-hmm. farmer's markets near you. Especially if you can see the farmer's market you're thinking about doing, go to yeah. that market, check it out, see what people are selling, see how they're selling, check out their booths, how are they displaying it, where are the customers going, who's carrying somebody's product. So if you see somebody buy something, check out why. Is there a, is there a line there? Are they mm-hmm. doing something differently? Are they saying something differently? So just kind of educate yourself as best you can. And something that we noticed whenever we went to a market was that somebody had uh, just a box of sunflower microgreens, but it was covered in shell holes and dirt and all this, and none of it had sold. It was literally a container about this big, full of these sunflowers that are about this big, just littered with seed holes yeah. and all this. So, and, and it didn't sell. And, and I mean, I would never buy that product. I mean, that'd be a nut. You don't want to chew those shells. You don't want to, uh, personally, I don't want to have to deal with just all that versus us where, you know, you're getting a product, 99.95% of our product is going to look just like this. Yeah. It's going to have no seed hole. It's going to be very clean looking. You can just eat it automatically instead of trying to figure out how am I going to get the seed holes off of this when it's already harvested. <laughs> exactly. And that goes for all of our products. Yeah. I mean, there is nothing. I mean, maybe some tiny, tiny seed holes in here. But for the most part, everything is incredibly clean uh, the way it is displayed. And funny enough, we actually didn't wash this produce. So we just grow it that carefully yeah. and harvest it that carefully um, that we, uh, you know, that the, the product comes out like this. So yeah. that's why I think we're able to charge a premium and get away with it. The only thing that people did not want to <laughs> want to buy, and I don't blame them. Whenever I started packing it up, because the salad doesn't look like a lot of salad until no. you actually, if you'll take this, yes. until you microphone. actually bust this out. So I think presentation-wise, this was not a very good idea. Uh, 
but it's actually incredibly abundant once you kind of, I'm just gonna use this example here. It's a different kind of box, I couldn't find her. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. So, I mean, once you kind of get this out, it does turn into a tremendous amount of product, really. So you kind of unfluff it. So, but because it was displayed in these little baggies, see, I mean, once you kind of pull this out, you could see how this literally becomes a lot of product. But the way it was displayed, I wouldn't want to pay $5 for this mm -hmm. personally. Um, and I knew that going into it. I was like, you know, I'm just going to see how this goes, especially because there's other lettuce vendors there who have like, they're growing some killer their, lettuce. Their lettuces were beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And then here we are and we got these little, you know, sandwich bags that look almost empty. It's like what the, the uh, chip bags, once they've settled, you pop open your chips and you're like, this is disappointing. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of a surprise though because it actually uh, expands quite yeah. a bit. So that's just something that didn't work for us. But everything else really, really did sell. That brings in another point, really. Sorry, I'm chewing my lettuce here as I talk to y'all. Um, but I was going to say that um, the amount of varieties that we brought, we brought yeah. a lot of different varieties, which can be cumbersome to explain. Uh, it's a lot to be like, hey, so we got this, 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 and we got this. And yeah. it versus... Uh, what I think we're going to do is maybe choose four or five for the next market mm -hmm. and really just um, make those abundant and let them know, hey, if you're interested and you want some other products, let us know what you want. We can grow that for you. And that's where the sign up sheet comes in uh, very handy because it's yeah. like, hey, whatever you want, drop your name on this list. Uh, we'll send you an email. You tell us what you want and we'll make that happen for you. Mm -hmm. um, back to this sheet, though. So another great thing was we didn't have business cards. I would suggest no. maybe having a few, <laughs> only about like 10 people asked us for yeah. business cards, but it would have been a great point to be able to hand a business card out so that they have our information. We just said, hey, if you can just snap a picture of our, our banner or leave your name on this list, we'll send you an email and we'll follow up with you. Um, specifically, we had three chefs stop by and leave their names. And whenever the chefs, I know it was super awesome. We were excited. <laughs> that made me so happy because one of them is actually like our favorite burger place. It's right down the road. Yep. It was the <laughs> so owner of a, of a, they basically do cattle. Uh, they do all a bunch of different meats and stuff. And they also have a little burger shop, mm -hmm. which is super good. So I was able to get his name and email and, uh, and then I could just follow up. So I can send him an email and say, Hey, you know, I'm just interested. How can I serve you? Something like that. And that brings another point too. follow up quickly. So we followed yeah. up the day after the market. We sent out emails to everybody that bought our products and left us their email. We followed up. And also, whenever you do it, one, don't spam them. Don't blow them up. People don't like that. And two, take a take the time to do each email separately. Don't put them in a group one and send them all out one time because that's the easy thing to do. Yeah, and that would that's also infringing upon their privacy yes. because then you're sharing their email with everybody else exactly. when they've trusted you to uh, have their email. And so what we did is we sent every email yeah. individually. We, we created a template really. We, yeah. we did hello blank and then we'd fill in their name and then it had all the standard information. It said, thank you so much at the very end. And it's got a picture of Mandy and I uh, from the farmer's market so they can remember mm -hmm. visually who they who we were and, uh, and we said, you know, any questions or concerns, I gave my, them my telephone number, my email address, our Instagram, our YouTube, and, yeah, and our website, just every piece of information. That way, if they need to contact us, I'm making myself available to them. Yeah. And we also, for the chefs, they got a different email. Like the email that we sent them was designed for them yeah, so, compared to all of our normal consumers. Yeah, so Mandy handled all the regular customers and yeah. then I handled the chef. So I'd follow up with a, a separate email that was similar, but uh, very different in the fact of like, hey, so, you know, let me learn more about your business. What are you looking for? How can I serve you? Can I bring you some samples? Mm -hmm. uh, something like that for the uh, actual chefs. And everything has been going really great. And also just have a good time. I think that's the main thing about farmer's yeah. market is uh, we were smiling basically the entire time. And I think that's almost infectious to other people. When you they see you being happy, they, immediately are attracted right. to that energy you know it's it's just like if you saw somebody sad and disconnected would you be bye, -bye. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i don't feel like you're gonna want to approach a booth where somebody's feeling disconnected and it's like and i get it people have bad days and whatnot but whenever you're in this position 
uh, it's just you gotta you gotta kind of make yourself have a good day, and there's diff- different ways of doing that. You can do stretches, you can you know listen to mantras. I mean, there's a whole bunch of metaphysical things that you can do to actually get yourself in that kind of space. But just smile, you know, smile and have a good time, and do your best to be positive, yeah. uh, because that's what's really gonna help draw people into you. Is having a nice big cheesy grin, saying, "Hey, good morning, how are you?" And people just want to feel good. They want to have that connection. So that's something to be very aware of. Well, that's really just about it for the the quick overview. I mean, we can dive more into any section of this that you guys would like. Uh, We can dive deeper into the sales. We even thought about acting out, Mandy, (laughs) having... uh, I do crazy makeups and stuff. That's kind of my other thing I do. So I've dressed up as CJ before, and I look a lot like him, and I was thinking about doing that. (laughs) (laughs) So we were joking about doing, uh, like, pretend sales if you guys are interested. Uh, Just because I have done a lot of the, the quick, you know... Trying to, the hardest part is when somebody's passing by and they're doing that little head look, yeah. uh, how to get them engaged really quickly. You got like a few second window to, to, to create that connection before that uh, person walks by. So we can all, always talk about that more in depth if you guys are interested or about the edible flowers, about the packaging, about how we set up the booth, what we use, anything like that. Yeah. We're totally willing to talk about um, but we wanted to at least create this video so that we can share a little bit of about our experience and a little bit about what worked and what did not work um, in the hopes that this would bring some value to y'all. So thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really appreciate every bit of the support we have gotten. Oh, and we got tremendous support. Yeah. It's it's so sweet every day whenever we wake up and like this morning we got a really nice message, but hearing from people that watch our video and even at the farmer's market, um, one of the, the people we talked about that do the lettuce, uh, she said that her son, who's 12 years old, which hello, um, <laughs> said that he just, he loves our videos and it's just, it's so cool hearing all that feedback. And I think it touches both of our hearts like a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We were both so humbled whenever we came back from this first farmer's market and but just with the community's interaction with us, you know, and the support that we have felt from our YouTube channel and our Instagram and just around the actual community itself was uh, just very. Um, it actually is bringing me a little bit of tears. Yeah. <laughs> my heart. It's just like I don't know. It's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> thank it's just you. It's such a huge, huge blessing. So thank you, thank y'all from us. I got to throw my text in there. Thank y'all. You, thank y'all. <laughs> and uh, and just let us know whatever you want to see. Just let us know. We'll do uh, some more of that. I want to something I want to do is more of this kind of blog style, uh, something being a little bit more real instead of just all the structured yeah. experiments. We're still going to continue our experiment videos, uh, but we're kind of, I want to evolve a little bit more into talking about our experiences mm-hmm. more and sharing it and sharing what's going on with our lives and our space. I want to do recipes maybe. <laughs> yeah, she wants to share some recipes about how we use microgreens and things like that. We just want to expand a little bit more into this. So mm-hmm. We hope you all enjoyed this video. So if you did, please give us a big thumbs up. If you dislike it, give us a big thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. And we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we can. If you would like to subscribe to more like for more like this, I'm stumbling on my words. We do lots of experiments. We're hoping to, like I just said, expand into more blog style, talk about more of what we're doing, our life, how we grow, everything like that. So please subscribe for more like that. And if you would like to, our Instagram is at onthegrowfarms. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bam. Bam. See, perfect. I think we did a good job. Or you handle your phone. Ah! You calm down.